Hello and welcome to my ninth video of my Name for Beginners tutorial series Arrays and For Loops. So far we have been using variables of different types, both mutable and immutable, which works so far for what we were doing. What if you wanted to store multiple values of say integers or floats? For that we would require multiple variables, but that is a very slow process. For that arrays exist. Arrays are lists of values of the same type with a fixed size that must be known at compile time. What that means is that when you make a new array, it can be only of one type. For example, an integer or a float. Then you have to give it a size that must be known before running your program. Therefore, you cannot read from an input to make a new array of some size from the input. Values an array stores are called elements, which can be changed, sorted, and so on. Arrays elements can also be duplicates, meaning you can have multiple values of, say, integer 1. Now, let's look at this code. In the first line of code, we make a new type section using the var keyword, so we can declare and initialize our arrays quicker without writing var every time. Then in the next line of code, we make a new array a with the array keyword of size 3 of type integer inside the square brackets. This is an array's declaration. Then we also initialize the array by using the equal sign to assign the array 3 values 1, 2 and 5. As we have seen in the previous videos, you can also omit the declaration part of variables. The same goes for arrays. So we skip the declaration part and move straight to initialization and let the compiler determine infer the arrays data type. Then we assign the arrays values of 1, 7 and 50. Now in this line of code, we try to initialize an empty array, which again won't work as arrays are of fixed size and their size must be known before compiling. And here is the correct syntax for declaring an empty array, empty as in has no values yet, which you can then add at any time. Now let's comment this code that won't compile and display all of these arrays with echo. Echo A, echo B, and echo D. Let's compile. Here we go. This is the array values of the first array which is 1, 2, 5, here's the second one, 1, 7, 50 of B, and here are seven empty strings. Again, this is, these are empty strings. Now let's display all the array values elements one by one by using a new procedure, similarly to when we read input from the terminal. Instead of using the std in value, which we used to tell the compiler that we will be reading from the console, now we will use the std out to output to the console by calling appending a write procedure, this way we can display the values in the same line instead of using echo procedure and displaying them each in their own line. Okay, let's comment this out and type std out for console output followed by write procedure. Now we give it a name of our array A Then we use the array constructor and we specify the index of the element that we want to display. And zero is gonna display one. One would display two and two will display five. They start with zero. Okay, let's compile this. One, now if we give it a one, it'll give us two, and two, index two, will give us five. Now the same is gonna work for B. Let's give it two, let's finish at the end, 50. Now if we try to do this with the empty array of strings d it's gonna show nothing nothing at all not even a line because echo does a line and this one doesn't now there is a much quicker way of going through all the values elements of an array by using a loop there are two kinds of loops in them for loops known as for each in other programming languages and while loops for loops are specifically made for such scenarios when you want to iterate go through every element value of an array and then call some code on it, like displayed with echo or stdout.write. Let's look at this provided code. Here in this commented section is the basic structure of any for loop. It starts with the keyword for, followed by the variable that will be used to iterate code through every element value of some container list of values, which can only be accessed within this for loop, followed by the in keyword to specify what we will be iterating going through, followed by a container list, of values, which in programming jargon is called iterable, as in you can iterate through it, something that, that has more than just one value that you can loop through it. And then lastly, the code that will execute up to the number of values elements inside the container list times. Now let's look at the second working for loop and what it does. In this for loop, we give it a temporary variable i as an iteration, 
that again only works within the for loop then we give it our first array a then we display every element value of array a by giving the stdout.write procedure for the loop's temporary variable i which holds the current iteration of the array a now let's run this code and see the results okay one two five one two five okay here i have another example of a for loop that does exactly the same as the previous above one except that this one looks different it's longer to write but it gives you access to the index of the element value of the container list you're iterating going through which the above code cannot do which means that if you try to access the next element of the container list from the loops code you wouldn't be able to this one you have to manually tell it where to start and where to end this is done by finding the lowest index of the container list of array A by calling the low procedure on it, followed by two dots, the range operator, and ended by calling the high procedure on the array A to retrieve the highest index position of the last element of array A. We'll tell the for loop to iterate go through every element of array A, just like in the previous above for loop. In the for loop's body code, we must now use the name of our array A followed by square brackets, which are the constructors for arrays. And inside it, we give, we give it the for loop's temporary variable of i to specify the index of the value we're looking to display. This will then display all the elements, values of the array A in the same way. Now, if we comment this upper one and compile, it will all display the same. One, two, five. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you liked it. If you had any problems with any part of the video, let me know in the comment section. The code for this video is in the link in the description. Have fun.